Hi beautiful people. I hope you're blessed. Okay, so basically this video is about my fast and being led by the Holy Spirit to do my 40 day fast. Why um, I believe the Lord led me to do the 40 day fast and why I was led to exercise during my 40 day fast. Now when I was doing Now, when I was doing my 40-day fast, I did post uh, the greater part of my fast, and the com some of the comments were, "You should be resting, and you should probably um, start eating." Blah blah blah. I chose to ignore those comments because, like I said, my fast wasn't a physician-led fast; it was Holy Spirit-directed fast. So I wasn't. Um, I knew I would go into, I would go into them, have some detox symptoms. I knew that, and I knew that I had been directed to do the 40, 40 day fast for a while. So I wanted to be obedient, and I was successful in completing it. But um, I wanted to share some information that I um, encountered after I did my fast with the workouts. So in 1944. There was a preparation for World War II ending, and people, the, the, whoever did the study, it was a Dunn in Dunn University. They wanted to find out how people would how people's bodies would respond to having reduced calories for a, a great period of, a, a period of time. And so they had 36 men for a year. Um, in a supervised, focused uh, situation monitored by this Dunn University and they reduced their calories and just gave them carbs and protein. Yeah. Very little protein. These men had struggles with losing weight. Not only did they have struggles with losing weight, but they became, their body temperatures all dropped. So in t days where it's warm, like here it's a warm day, they had to wear another layer of clothes their endurance dropped, their um, uh, focus became less on everything else but food. So they were focused on food, how to get food, cookbooks. Actually, what they were saying is that during this particular, they call it starvation or no food experiment, ex <laughs> no food experiment what happened with these people, these men, is that they started to scavenge through the garbage for scraps of vegetables and meat. Two men were excused from the study because of this. Um, I would like to bring your attention to the ever popular um, Biggest Loser show where people were given less calories and told to do vigorous exercises. People were too, the participants were frustrated, they were constantly. Um, there were a lot of emotional situ um, instances where people cry, they can't do it. And not only that, when the ones who were successful and actually were able to lose the weight, a lot of them were complaining. I think there's actually something that to do with some kind of lawsuit. They, they really gained the weight back, if not more, afterwards. So um, the notion that people feel like failures because they're not able to be successful in losing weight on a reduced calorie diet, I think I'm I'm hopeful I'm hopeful that what I'm going to share today will debunk that, and so people will feel better about the fact that um, the idea that we reduce calories and um, we eat certain things in order to lose weight isn't how the body would respond. It, the body wouldn't respond positively in relation to losing weight that way. Now, in 1965, there was another gentleman named Angus Burris. I might have interrupted this. Angus, no, Barry. Barberry. He's from Scotland. He's from Scotland. He did a 392 day fast. He was, of course, morbidly obese. He had a lot of weight to lose. So he was supervised during this fast 
he drank only water, black coffee, and black tea. And at the end of his fast, he looked healthy, he felt well, he walked about normal like anybody else. He didn't have loose, sagging skin like the situations you see in The Biggest Loser where people have to have um, um, skin cut and off. And so he was able to successfully manage and maintain an average weight of 196 pounds. So, so I'm going to basically say that all my life I have been doing like little diets here and there. And because there, there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of diets that have come and gone. A lot of diets have come and gone, and rightfully so, because they weren't successful long term. So, um, um, my weight right now is still 140 pounds. I was 170, and wait, I'm 145 pounds. I was started off at 170, which means I lost 40 pounds in 40 days. I know I looked very, very thin when I was done. And I didn't like the way I looked at all, but I knew it was temporary. And I am, I was able to work out during my fast and I keep, kept muscle, some muscle mass. And now I'm working on building um, with, a, with a fresh slate. I feel like I have a fresh slate now. My taste buds are very different than they have been before. And when I was done, I felt as though I had an opportunity to start fresh. I don't know if you've ever, if anyone's ever done a, a long fast before. I've done a long fast, well, longest it's been 10 days before this fast. But with this particular fast, I felt compelled to eat healthier and to work out and to drink more water. And I haven't had juice. Actually, no, I, I think I might have had a sip of my daughter's, but. I pretty much have water every day. I've come to really, truly love carbonated water with lemon in it. It's too difficult so anyway. looking at, at um, weight loss. And now I'm going to go into why the second, the, the gentleman, Angus, his um, fast was successful. And why a lot of people who fast are continue to fast and why that works. So basically... Fasting, when you fast, the first, first to third day is the hardest. And, I, and I, I'm not going to say for sure, I don't know, but I know for me um, it was the hardest because I think my body was used to ex um, ex anticipating food. Even though before I started my fast, I was eating vegan, and which means basically kale. I was eating a lot of salad and a lot of um, asparagus, sweet potato, all that kind of stuff. And I was led to eat that way, and I was also led to eat once a day. And I think I do believe the Lord was preparing my body for not for for him for the introduction of this forty day fast. When you eat, your body produces a hormone called ghrelin, and it's the hunger pangs that you experience when you're about to have food. Now, those. That hormone is only produced when it's anticipating food. It's almost like um, if you're going to get your nails done, I don't know, you prep them first. So basically, that's not even a good example. <laughs> but the idea is that your body preps to receive food. And so when I started my fast, I had already, already been only expecting food once a day. But... Um, I still was eating. First day was okay. Second day was hard. The third day was the hardest, but um, what I did was I kept myself very busy. And I kept myself away from the kitchen as much as I could. And so after the third day, I was able to go back into the kitchen and continue to cook because my daughter went up, my body was no longer expecting food and it was no longer producing ghrelin to to um, the hormone to help break down food. So I was, once you get past the third day, You're there was a study go. done by um, an author, Asting Sinclair. The, the book is called The Fast Cure. And 
Mm, what he said in his book confirms what I was experiencing. And basically what he says is that the great thing about fasting is that it sets you in a new standard of health. Um, and he, what he's saying is that basically fasting heals the body. And I'll go into that further in a little bit. People who felt that they needed to start eating more healthy, when people feel like they start to, they need to start eating more healthy once they do a fast, and that's exactly what I experienced too. Like it, you just feel different. You feel healthier. Your taste buds change. I was craving stuff like avocados, and alfalfa sprouts, <laughs> and I only had my like my first experience with alfalfa sprouts when I was um, playing basketball. I must have been about sixteen then. And I just had this craving, almost like being pregnant. I was like, I just would love to have an avocado right now. So anyway, I ended up having, making myself a vegan hot dog, no meat, with avocado and asparagus. Not asparagus. Avocado and avocado and um, alfalfa sprouts. And it was actually so, so good. Um, he also confirmed that the most, dif most difficult days is the first, the second and the third days. And he they found that when you don't eat enough people become ravenously hungry like that's a very intense hunger so there's a lot of um evidence through studies that have proven that um to reduce calories isn't the answer and that um fasting heals the body sleep so for people to sleep generally about eight hours of, that's the average eight hours a night and people's the highest levels I mean the lowest level of ghrelin is at nine o'clock in the morning because you had the body has not been expecting food all night like people don't get up in the middle of the night usually and feel like oh I need to eat like people survive the night and don't are not eating and that's because the body's not expecting food at night it makes sense right um, so the Arkin University in Denmark study shows that ghrelin levels drop more that you fast. So the more that you fast, the more the less ghrelin that you have, and it makes sense based on what ghrelin is. And um, I'm finding that it's hard for me now to. I'm still tweaking this. I'm. It's hard for me now to figure out when I'm actually hungry, because I'm. I was used to always having to wait for that feeling of the grumbling feeling to know when it's time to eat but now I don't, I don't remember the last time I experienced grumbling like a hunger um, which makes it kind of difficult because I, I, I'm kind of torn I do eat in the day um, but it's not a severe ravenous like hunger thing so it's basically just to make sure that there's nutrients in my body and I, I enjoy the process. I enjoy the chewing, the tasting of the food. Um, so I'm still working on um, portion size. Um, and incorporating food, macronutrients. Food that is high in nutrients and, well, and high in healthy fats so will sustain me until the next time I eat which could be I mean I could do a diet I could I could live uh, intermittent on um, intermittent fasting and eat every other day but I haven't been really led to do that although I've heard things some things about that I haven't been led to do that and maybe because I have been led to kind of work out vigorously every day I mean, I mean sometimes I do three and then a little sure. something extra. So our body's going to the th after the third day. Our bodies, like I said, body stops expecting expecting food, so it goes to other sources, and this is called ketosis. This is where the body goes and looks for fat stores, to um, for energy for for uh, to survive. So during a fast, the body taps into the fat stores but not only that when you are fasting and you exercise the body even more so efficiently taps into fat stores and I think that's kind of why I was led to do that I was led to exercise not only does the body tap into fat stores but exercising helps the body to not break down muscle um, hormone sensitive lipase 
is what the body produces and one of the things the body produces when you fast now when you what counters that is insulin and that's why with people who do the ketosis diet or they fast they're very particular about not having sweets so um, sometimes people cut fruit out completely um, they don't have for sure refined sugars um, they don't usually have cornstarch carbs breads that kind of thing even oats and it's not because um, those things you can't I mean you can't eat it but if it's this is about weight loss and about maintaining a healthy weight um, it's not necessarily about um, what you eat it's about what you eat and what and how it makes the body produce produce insulin which makes the body difficult for the body to um, tap into the fat and there's I'm gonna have to see if I can link as many things as I can in the, in the description about the video the videos that I've seen I mean I read a couple articles and I w watched a few videos and there's so much information out there for people that really want to know how the body works what we've been taught all along is isn't true even in school I was taught about calories and all kinds of counting calories and I think even now they post the calories of certain things in certain restaurants you go to and there's a place called Tim Hortons and if you're in Canada you'll know they for their food that they that they sell they put a calorie count beside the name of the food and it's not and it's funny because these are like high sugar foods so the calories don't even tell you how much these foods will impact your insulin so they have sugar on them usually sugar in them and they're grains but that's a whammy but huge whammy to the insulin so to counter that if someone was to eat the same amount of calories in vegetables it would not spike your insulin and it would not make you gain weight so calories it counting calories is isn't efficient and it doesn't make any sense a bowl full of kale broccoli asparagus or whatever vegetables you love the same amount of calories probably five times the amount of food and it would not spike your insulin which means you would not be gaining weight so the theory about um, about fasting making you starve isn't true at all our bodies produce um, hormones that help to preserve the muscle it also and those hormones are one um, what is it the hormones that we leucine when fasting one has a higher blood leucine level leucine is a very is a key branch chain amino acid that helps preserve lean body mass it also produces human growth hormones human growth hormones also metabolizes large quantities of free fatty acids from the adipose tissues this is used to supply the cell with energy so as long as you have fat stores your body will efficiently run survive I mean this gentleman that we talked we talked about before he had he went on a 392 day fast and he was and he lived to tell a tale and I think that it's kind of sad that that story was on the, in the news for a period of time and then they haven't talked about it again. That, was, that would be a story that you think that they would share in schools all the time. But instead, what are they serving in schools? Granola bars chock full of sugar and grains, which is high in, which spikes your insulin. Potatoes, high carb, fried, probably in canola oil. That's a whole different video, which I'll have to explain another time pot machines, juice machines, anything that would make a child heavy and sick. They've basically targeted children. And I guess a day when they have, like I know my, my girls will have a special day where they'll have pizza day or a sub day or a special day where they have a, they bring money and buy the food. It's usually things with bread and preserved meats and sugary drinks and a cookie or something sweet afterwards something is not right with this at all at all I'm really 
Um, really what it says to me is that we have to, as people, especially particularly children of God, because um, when you become a child of God, you invite the Holy Spirit to live in you. And with other people from different religions, different practices, spiritual practices, they a lot of them know better. And I know people who practice yoga, which a Christian should not do, they know that their, their bodies are temple where whatever spirit they serve dwells in them. You know, we are our souls are our soul is where the Holy Spirit, any spirit, lives. So when you become a Christian, as I said, you invite the Holy Spirit to live in you. And your body is your temple. The Bible says clearly your body is a temple for the for God to dwell in. And so you would take want to take care of that body. Not only that, you want to put things in the body that um, build it and that are healthy and good for you. So, you know, let me just share where this information came from. There's a doctor named Dr. Johnson Fung. He wrote the book, The Obesity Code, and he's the one who, what did he say, obesity code? Oh, talks about how we, how insulin makes you gain weight and the, the types of food that spike your insulin, and then it's not about calories. So that's The Obesity Code. Um, Ashton Sinclair wrote a book called The Fasting Cure in 1911. And basically saying that our bodies, um, while we're in a fast, repairs itself. The body not only eats at the fat stores, but it also eats at, it takes, it destroys and gets rid of um, parasites. So it starves the parasites and they leave the body, which I've had that experience too. And also, it eats at cells that are unhealthy. It basically cleans up the body. It, it, it does, it, it, it um... I've had a lot of things that I thought I would never get rid of are, are gone that I, I didn't I never ever thought I thought I would I would be old and gray and and consistently and continue to have certain certain issues that I could see in my face but um, like I said before that the, the infections of the, the nodules where my eyelashes are they're all healed there there's bumps here I guess from years of wearing mascara I mean I was young I didn't I used to try and like I'm very frugal. I used to I would add, try and add water to my mascara to let it last for longer. I didn't know any better, and um, I didn't throw my mascara out for a long time. And other things I did to myself, I didn't know any better. And um, my eyes are whiter now. They used to be really, really brown in here. I just did a lot of the body does eat away at what it conceives as being uh, unhealthy cells during a fast. So so um, that's the book, um, The Fasting Cure. And um, the University of Dunn is the university that did the, um, the starvation experiment. And that report was published in 1973. Oh no, sorry, that was the the um, the Dunn University did the experiment with a gentleman who did the 392 day fast. That was um, Angus Burl. Bur oh my gosh, Burley. Bur Burbly. You know what? Someone, please. <laughs> I'm going to put a link to the article in the description. I will put the pictures of these gentlemen, the, the group from the first group of the starvation experiment, and Angus, who did the 392 day fast. And then I would love to hear your comments about um, what they look like, what you thought you know, they, they, um, you know, they went through, why you think um, doctors, you know, conventional doctors and pharmaceutical companies aren't sharing this information.